It still doesn't feel real to me. So much has happened since we first met that it feels like a lifetime ago. The nightmare is finally over, though. I know I won't wake up to find everything as it was, but there's a new dawn, at least. Prince Ernskar is eager to lay out the terms of our new accord, but that's tomorrow's work. After this, my only order of business is to get out of this damned finery. It may be good for impressing folk, but it's like wearing a mountain goat. I cannot think of a time or a tale where a reach folk and Nord extended a hand to one another unless each was holding a dagger. This may be the first time such a thing's occurred. May it not be the last. Much as anything can, stone crumbles, forests burn, even Daedra die now and again. This life's a struggle. The only thing that's changed is what we struggle against. The peace will last so long as we fight for it. Aye, we've trodden circles with blood and raid clawed in our eyes for as long as anyone can remember. But just now, we've glimpsed a new path of this endless trail of suffering. Peace is on the horizon. And we're for it now, with all we've got. No matter what befalls Skyrim, we are Nords, we are strong, shores bones. If I had my lute, I would sing it loud for all to hear. I do. She's an impressive young woman. Is Western Skyrim ready for Swana? That's the more pertinent question. Solitude shuns the outside world, while Swana reaches for it. We'll have to see how that works out in the end. I have no desire to replace a despot. Haven't these people suffered enough? In any event, my forces are stretched too thin to take on much more. If the people request... I think that went well, don't you? I thought it would be best to keep the speeches short. I'm just glad my father agreed to let me take the lead. I don't know that the Ard has the patience for one of the Skald King's epic toasts. After years of saber-rattling, we need to start learning how to be good neighbors. How will we trade goods? How will we resolve disputes? Jarl Svana and I resolved to lay a foundation that our diplomats can build upon. However long it takes us. Right, the art. I think it might be best for Svana and I to work closely on a framework first, and present it to Ard Kadak. He's got a lot going on, and I'm sure he'd rather not spend hours debating every detail. The spirits must have plans for me, Harrier. Why else put me back here in the Reach? I'll help keep Ard Kadak out of trouble for a while. After that, we'll see. It's strange to say, but I don't want to think too far ahead. After everything that happened, I want to relish the present moment. Help Kadok, my people. Just enjoy the time I've been given. You should try it, Harrier. Do you a world of good. That was a heartening display. The Reach Folk are often dismissed as savage and beastly, but they have a strong sense of honor. I know that all too well. Much Reach blood stayed my blade during Varad's rebellion. Not all were proud and noble warriors, but many deserved respect. It is the duty of those who fight to remember those who die. Even their foes. No, it was a just war. Still, I bear no ill will toward the Reachfolk for the misdeeds of the Longhouse Emperors. 
Look around. It is plain to see that they possess as much honor and goodness as anyone else. I hope they enjoy a lasting peace. Well, Lyris wants to relax, see the world while we're not trying to save it. She also mentioned that she wants me to sharpen her axe and polish her armor. Her most peculiar smile, though, makes me suspect there's more to these chores than she let on. Good work, partner. It's always a pleasure to fight by your side. Forgive me for saying this, but I hope we don't need to do that again for quite some time. Don't worry. I'll stick around to raise a glass or two with you. Celebrate our victory. If I stay too long, though, one of these leader types will try to send me on another mission. Sai so might not mind, but I'm determined to finally relax a little. Hey, I enjoy saving the world as much as the next hero, but even I have my limits. I want to spend some time with the man I love, traveling and doing anything that doesn't involve hitting somebody with my axe. Initially, not even a little. There are a lot of things I've been meaning to do with Sai that should keep me occupied for a few weeks. And when we do get restless, I have a knack for stumbling into the next threat to the realm. We'll be fine. Never thought I'd set foot in Markarth except to conquer it. Strange times. Strange, but not entirely unpleasant. Still, I'll not get comfortable here. Too much dwarf workings and old stone. May as well live in a barrow. My hold endures, as we always have. Though we might not have weathered the Harrowstorms without that elixir Fenorian and old Mjolin concocted, they still threaten the countrysides. But we can fight free of the fear that we'll be made monsters. Better. Much better. There's still a paw that hangs over her to the rest of the townsfolk. But at home we're beginning to feel more like a family again. She even smiles now and again. You've got enough arse kissing to endure, but I'm grateful. In all my years, I have neither seen nor heard of such a miracle as you've delivered today. You must have Shor's own bond with Mother Wolf for her to carry so many lost pups back here. This old woman not important enough to merit an invitation, is that it? If you must know, Svana asked me to counsel her on the reach, but I'd have come whether I was invited or not. Can't trust such important matters to the likes of kings. That I have, that I have. Many times during the vast span of my life, though not in some years. The city never changes, only the occupants. Perhaps that will change now, should this peace hold? I should think this whole affair taught you that nothing lasts forever. But it seems to me the people are ready for this peace. I don't think it will crumble easily so long as ambitious fools aren't permitted to chip away at it. Salutations! Wherever you go, celebrations seem to follow, even if this one is a bit peasantly. But not everyone can have the refined palate of a royal taster. I believe the word you are looking for is refined. My boon companion is the Jarl of Solitude. I have to ensure everything served to her is of the highest quality. <laughs> You'd be surprised at the sort of slop the Blue Palace chefs will put on her plate. <laughs> For the future High Queen? Certainly. Usually I have to have two or three courses before they get it right. It's cost me three notches on my best belt, but that's a small price to pay for royalty. Hmm. Speaking of, it's about time to inspect the kitchen.
After everything that's happened, I think I'll enjoy a nice, quiet month of Ravenwatch Castle. Ah, who am I kidding? I'll be lucky if Adusa lets us rest tonight. What's left of the Grey Host may be in shambles, but the leftovers are certain to make trouble elsewhere, even with their Ashen Lord gone. Plus, we'll need to catch up on who else has been up to no good while they hogged our attention. Oh, you'll be the first to read the naughty list when we've got one, trust me. Maybe I'll even tag along, but no caves this time. This one is not used to being this close to the center of attention. She does not like it. Give Adusa a shadow or dark corner. Celebrations such as these tend to be too bright and noisy for my taste. Does a tiger need to be thanked for killing a terror bird? Adusa Daro does not hunt to be appreciated. She hunts because it is her nature. The only reward this one needs is worthy prey and fresh blood. Hmm... You think so? That would make this endeavor much more bearable. Perhaps this tiger will linger a while longer. So far, so good. He has skills and a sense of honor that will serve him well. This one hoped to let Gwendis take him under her wing, finish his training. But as usual, the little one sees a toy to play with instead of a brother to assist. You've done the Ravenwatch proud. I don't suppose you'd accept an assignment to reorder all of Count Verandis's records? No? Well, I can look forward to that later. For now, we celebrate. <laughs> no, I won't be barricading myself in the library any longer. But someone has to curate our records. Can you imagine Adusa doing it? Or oh, Gwendis? I'll show you the state of her sock drawer sometime. This was quite the adventure, wasn't it? But we survived it, even if it was touch and go there for a bit. Forgive me for being sentimental, but it was you who got me through it. I'll always be grateful for that. Well, I mean it all the same. If there's ever a time when you need someone to be there for you, count on me. Now go on. Everyone wants to talk to you. And I'm only liable to embarrass myself if I keep carrying on. Is what they are saying true? That the last of the Grey Host is truly dead? Then you have the Pyre Watch's eternal gratitude. I must return their stolen remains to the unhallowed grave, and bury them deeply enough to be forgotten by all but my order. Once it is rebuilt... No. Some of those defending the Bankerai garrison showed interest. But most of them were only seeking a less hazardous post. The Pyre Watch has no need of layabouts and cowards. We must be eternally vigilant. Perhaps I will try Kavach next. My ancestors must be burying their heads on the far shores at that suggestion. Vampires would be better suited to this eternal vigil than we mortals. But it is our duty. Still... We have similar goals to the Raven Watch. Perhaps a partnership would do. Yes, well, it would be ungrateful of me to go without giving my thanks to Fenorian again. If his fellows are as honorable, then introductions may be in order. You're the one who killed Rada al Saran? Who helped stop the Grey Host? I had no idea. You should have told me. You're a legend. Hard to say. Adusa Daro has begun my training, but there's only so much we can accomplish out here in the Reach. She says we'll be heading to Rivenspire soon, so I can train in Ravenwatch Castle. And I met Gwendis in Fenorian. They welcome me. Adusa says they're my sister and brother now. Fenorian seems nice enough, if a little too scholarly for my taste. Gwendis, however... She's intense. 
None of my actual siblings ever looked at me the way she does. It's disconcerting. If you say so. Hopefully, once I prove myself, they'll accept me as a true member of the family. In the meantime, I'm trying to remember everything Adusa tells me. I want to make sure she never regrets coming to my aid. Or you either, my friend. The Croi once again have a reason to look at you in admiration, outsider. Well, thank you. Karthwasta knows the favor of the Daedra once more, and the air no longer reeks of the storm. Our home is at peace, as are we. You saved the Croi clan, and now the reach itself. I'm sorry I distrusted you. But in my defense, it's not every outsider that can wipe out an army of vampires and werewolves. You're different from outsiders. Thank you. Hey, but don't get any ideas, outsider. I'm still keeping my eye on you. So mind yourself. It's good to see you, friend. It seems we of the Reach owe much to you. Now that it's free of the vampire's pall, Karth the Waston thrives. The Croi clan will always remember what you did for us. Finally, a moment to pause and reflect. You've a great deal to reflect upon too. You stopped the Grey Host, restored life to Markarth's dead, saved Tamriel from certain peril. <laughs> That's a rather long list of accomplishments, I must say. Since the incident with Pythis, I've focused on applying myself to my studies. My fellow Sijiks never faulted me for what happened. They've been nothing but supportive. So much so, in fact, that they've asked me to consider taking an apprentice. <laughs> me! Friend, you've done more for me people than most Reachmen know. You've changed my view of Outlanders, that's for sure and certain. I think the spirits are smiling on us once more. The Thorn Roots have given me clan no more trouble. And I'm thankful. Father thinks it's time I take up more of the leadership of the clan. So he's teaching me the ways. Ugh, I hope I'm ready. It's a grand occasion you've delivered us to, Outsider. I'm glad Madonna and I could be a part of it. Free and safe, thankfully. After the trouble with the Thorn Roots, we found shelter in the mountains. Now, it seems that it's safe for us to return to the Lowlands. And I'm passing on to Madonna what knowledge I can. She is ready to lead. Outsider, Madarin told me everything you went through to help stop the hand fasting between him and Eslin. That now seems small in comparison. I'm so grateful you came to my homeland. I'm glad to see you, Outsider. I can scarce believe everyone you've drawn to this place. Eslin and I were just remarking on it as we were... catching up. Drisen and I have been speaking with the Six Fords. Not all heed the tale that Barth taught us, but some are beginning to question the point of a continued feud. Eslin and I have kept in contact. She seems to not hold what happened against me. It's good to see you once more, friend. I can barely believe the same outsider who helped me was involved in such important work. To see everyone who's been brought here by your deeds is inspiring. And it's good to see Modern and Jasen. Each day I reach more eagle seers with the tale you helped us discover. I believe many are beginning to reconsider the feud with the Six Fords. It'll take time before there's peace, but I still have hope.
If you told me a season ago that the leader of Western Skyrim would share a dais with the Reach King, I would have laughed in your face. But here we are. Not much to rebel against now that Arana has made peace with the Yard. We'll stay long enough to deal with any grey horse lurking nearby, and then we'll be on our way. Markarth's not the sort of place werewolves should linger in. Too many people. The survivors asked me to be chieftain, but it's time to let the Ghost Song clan go and begin a new clan with a new name. Better to leave the dark old ways behind. Thinking about the name Longfangs or Wolf Runners. Father, I beseech you, guide the wanderer swiftly back to us. Master, look! Your prayer has been answered! Ah, the hunter returns once more. Her scene certainly favors you, my friend. What of the symbol of Orikenbeg? Were you able to retrieve it? Excellent! With all five aspects of our Huntfather represented, Hersin will recognize this shrine as sacred and true. Consider this place your sanctuary, my friend. You built it, as surely as did I and my apprentices. Take this with our thanks. Five relics decorate this shrine. For five are the aspects of Lord Hersin. The five are all. The five are one. Five are true and death in the woods. Five must be revealed. The hunter Alrebeg. He brings new prey to our lands and hunts beside us. Storybeg, the king of wolves. He brought us the gift of skin shifting to remind us that we are predators, not prey. Gulebeg, the clever fox. He teaches us secrets, tricks that helped us survive the fall of Lork. Rockabeg, the mighty bear. Between hunts, he reminds us of the value of solitude, peace from labors, and the quiet strength of our mortal souls. Finally, Urikenbeg, the great stag. His hooves drum the blood summons that calls prey from far and wide. We will fight alongside Hersin at the end of all days. These are the aspects of Hersin. Five, and no more. Hunt Father, guide us through this life, and know that we alone remember our purpose. When a wandering hunter arrives bearing an unexpected bounty, that is a good omen. That's how bonds were forged in the days of our ancestors. We have made such a bond, my friend. Rest well, hunter. You shall find only friends here. You may not have chosen him. But obviously, her scene has chosen you. You know this, deep inside. Where your hunt takes you next, I do not know. 
but you can always rest here when you need a respite from the chase. Silver. Perhaps the one true protection against vampires and werewolves. We need more of it. What is it? I did not expect any company, my friend. You caught me in a moment of quiet contemplation. Uh, but please, join me. I have lived a very long time. Even by high elf standards, I am ancient. I confess, I often embrace the routine as a distraction from the gnawing dread of my curse. Many times I sought a home. A family, and a cause, yet I never remain for long. It was not always my choice. Seeing the lengths Rodder went to to save the Grey Host makes me question my commitment. Did I ever fight that hard for those I loved? Or did I just convince myself I had to move on because it was easier to start over? Not yet. I think I may have gotten it right this time, however. I built something that will outlast me. The Ravenwatch are able, caring, devoted. I raised them well. It's comforting to know I have somewhere to return. Even if only occasionally. They are my family. And you as well. I had not confided in anyone since Rodda, until you took up my cause. I... I would like to bequeath my name to you, if you will have it. Then it's in good hands. Thank you for coming to visit, my friend. This little chat has dispelled some of the gloom hanging over me. The bonds of friendship weave a net that will catch you when you fall. Rada said that. Though the sentiment is much more martial than the original Yokuden. May you always be surrounded by those who will catch you when you need them most. I should return to the Dark Heart soon. I grow weary if I'm away from it for too long. Plus, I need no additional reasons to nod off as I trudge through the Night Hollow Testament. Until next time, my friend. <laughs>